The main difference between online and blended learning is really one of geographic location. So many people have tried to define things much more in detail than that. But in terms of planning for courses and new programs, it's really helpful to think about geography. So if a student can be literally anywhere in the world and through a computer with an internet connection, access a course and participate fully in all course activities, then that's an online course. And that online course can look and be organized in a variety of ways, but essentially it's that remote participation that defines something as a fully online course. Blended learning combines elements of online learning with elements of traditional face-to-face -face learning. So if a student has to be even for part of a course or a small part of a course, in a particular geographic location at a particular time, for example, a college classroom, then we're talking about blended learning. It's important to think about geographic location because that impacts who you can market your program to, who can access your program, because if they're living far away from your campus, then that impacts their ability to participate in the face-to-face -face parts of blended learning. We now have two decades of research that confirms that online learning outcomes, blended learning outcomes, and face-to-face -face learning outcomes can be of equal quality. The differences in quality tend to be more about design and implementation and not so much about technology. And there's some evidence to suggest that blended learning might be the best of the three modes because you are able to combine what's best about face-to-face -face instruction and what's best about online instruction and combine those in a way that really meets your particular goals for that particular audience. Many of the things that happen in traditional face-to-face -face classes can also happen in online-only classes. They just might look a little different. So for example, face-to-face -face classes have a lot of activities that happen with all the students at the same time because they're in class together. Lectures, small group discussions in class, that kind of thing. Online, those things can also happen synchronously. Web conferencing is one tool that instructors like to use to gather their students together in a virtual classroom and have a discussion or give a presentation using their PowerPoint slides. Web conferencing uh, has grown a lot in its capacities, so you can show your PowerPoint slides, you can show your desktop and do a web tour, you can take a poll. Students can actually work together in breakout groups. They can participate with their own voices. They can participate with text. So you can really accomplish a lot in a, a web conferencing environment and capture some of that synchronous activity from the face-to-face -face classroom. Other tools that you can use to have students engaging together in real time are things like simple text chatting or video chatting like Skype. Some instructors like to use virtual worlds or immersive worlds like Second Life, which is a way of gathering students together in an environment that's a little bit more like a video game to lend a sense of place to the experience of being together. But there really are a lot of different ways to have students interacting with the instructor and with each other in an online environment. One of the great things that online learning offers is a variety of asynchronous participation and engagement. And asynchronous means that the students are doing their activity or participating or engaging at different times. So it really meets that anytime, anywhere benefit that you hear about a lot when people talk about online learning. So for example, students can collaborate together on projects using a variety of web 2.0 tools like wikis or blogs or virtual whiteboarding or virtual concept maps and they can log in and they can make their contribution and participate on their own time and then slowly over time you get a real uh, sense of work being done and discussion about ideas that kind of thing. A lot of learning management systems also have a 
pretty simple discussion tool that allows students to log in and have discussion of ideas and they can participate via writing. The other thing about the Web 2 tools is that they're increasingly supporting different kinds of participation like writing, like speaking, like participation via webcam and video. So the way that students engage in those activities can be very varied and you can structure activities in different ways to support uh, collaboration, discussion, that sort of thing. I think the value of incorporating these asynchronous tools into online blended and face-to-face -face classes is that it allows students to participate more, to engage more. Uh, in a face-to-face -face class in a discussion, only one student talks at a time. In an online discussion or an online activity where students are interacting in different tools, they can contribute their voice much more readily, more students can participate in any one activity, and it also gives students that are maybe shy or introverted the chance to participate through writing or to participate with a little more time to prepare. And in that sense, you really allow different student voices to emerge in the environment. Just like with face-to-face -face learning, there are a lot of different ways to organize a blended learning course or program. So some might want to retain the structure of classroom meeting times. So if you meet three times a week, you're still meeting three times a week. But outside the class, you supplement that in-class learning with online activities where students are engaging with rich, maybe multimedia content resources that are web-based, or they're participating in collaborative group projects that are supported by Web2 kinds of tools. Uh, this might also be considered web-enhanced classes. Isn't, that's another term to call this kind of blended learning. So you're still meeting the same amount of time, but you're doing a, a significant piece of learning in the online environment outside of class. Another way of blending is to replace class time with online activity. So for example, a course might, that might normally meet once a week throughout a semester goes down to four or five times meeting per week. And then the rest of the learning activity happens in these online sorts of activities uh, outside of class. Another way of blending is to again retain the regular face-to-face -face meetings, but to change the location of some of those face-to-face -face meetings to a computer lab or an enhanced uh, classroom collaborative space like the whistle here at UW-Madison so that the students are in class, but during that time they might be working more independently or working collaboratively and taking advantage of the content resources, the software programs, et cetera, that are available on the computers at that lab. And then the instructor is there to answer their questions and work one-on-one -on -one with individuals or address group work. So it switches up the nature of the instructor-student dynamic in those portions of the class. Just like with face-to-face -face learning, there are many different ways that you can organize your online class or program. For example, you might have an online class that uses web conferencing a lot. So the students are meeting regularly, say once or twice a week, in web conferencing together with the instructor and uh, having most of the class activity look a lot like the face-to-face -face class activity. Another way is to use the asynchronous tools much more so that the students maybe are engaging with content resources on their own, practice activities on their own, but then participating in collaborative activities and discussions with the instructor, with each other, in different kinds of asynchronous tools. And then finally, you can certainly combine different synchronous with asynchronous tools and activities to create an online course that does a little of both. There really are a lot of possibilities. It just depends on what goals you have and uh, trying to develop something that meets those goals for those particular students. If you're new to the field of online education but you're curious, I think that one of the best things to do is to start by not thinking about technology, but by thinking about goals that you have for students. Maybe thinking about things that students have a hard time doing in your courses. And really try and focus on a problem 
that needs a solution. And often, technologies, online blended, what have you, can be used to address that particular problem. But until you have the, the goal in mind, I think it's a mistake to just start thinking about a particular technology. I like to hear instructors that say, you know, my students are really having trouble with such and such a concept, rather than, I really want to try a blog. Because when they say to me, I really want to try, to try a blog, I ask them why. And then, that's the conversation where that learning goal comes out. So I think that the best place to start is with what are your students challenged by? And then to see what sort of technological solution might be applicable. Once you have the problem or the, the, the issue in mind, then I say start talking to people that have addressed that problem in different ways. And you might find a solution that has technology in it to bring to bear on your problem.